All right, next we're going to talk about the saw stop table saw and how to operate it safely. Uh, the saw stop table saw is a very unique type of saw. It's designed so that the saw blade will have an electronic break that stops it immediately if for some reason you should accidentally put your finger into the blade. Um, this is what happens is there's a little break and then the saw blade and the break make contact and grind themselves together, causing this break to have to be replaced as well as whatever saw blade was on the saw. So when we work with this saw, we cannot put anything metal on it. We can't put anything that is wet. And of course, you don't want to put your fingers into the saw blade or you will activate this electronic switch that effectively ruins the saw for the rest of the day um, until we have time to replace the brake. All right. So table saw, it's called that because it's basically a big table with a saw blade that comes out of the middle. This control here raises the blade up and it should be left in the down position when it's not being used like it was. Um, there's another control on this side which tilts the blade. So just a big crank that makes the blade go all the way to 45 degrees. And we're going to leave that straight up for now. This is our on switch. So when it starts, there'll be a flashing red light and it has to warm up a little bit. So when that light stops flashing, then it's ready to be used. The primary use of a table saw is for doing rip cuts. The rip cuts are cuts that go the long way down the wood. So going the short way, we would call that a cross cut. And you can use the saw to do them, but it's not the usual way to do it. So we're going to use what's called a fence. This is a rip fence. I'll bring that over here. And we're going to set that up so that we can rip this piece of wood. So basically what we're going to do is just take the little edge off of it, make it slightly narrower. Now, because we don't want to use any more saw blade than we have to, we're going to take this saw blade and adjust it so it just sticks up slightly above the wood so that the little round part called the gullet that's between the blades is even with the top surface of the material. All right? Then we tighten that knob right here and that keeps the blade at the height where we placed it. Okay. Now, when I'm cutting something on the table saw, I don't really need to draw the line all the way down. All I need to do is put it right at the feed end, put my mark there, and then I can line my mark up with the blade, taking this rip fence and setting it over, and then locking it down. Um, the saw blade that we are using right now has alternating bevel teeth. So that means it's going to cut this way and this way. We're going to lose about a sixteenth of an inch of wood to something called kerf. So if you want to have a very accurate cut between this line and this edge, you want to set it so that one edge of the saw blade is contacting this mark and the other edge is outside of that line. So whatever kerf happens is outside of the dimension that we want to keep. All right, that's not really a safety rule, but it'll help with accuracy. So for safety's sake, we want to have the distance between our rip fence and our saw blade be no smaller than the width of your hand. Okay? If it gets smaller than that, we'll have to use a special device to be able to push the wood through. But for now, we have enough space that we can just use our hand to do that. So we're going to do it that way. Maybe show that again. 
So if we're going to push wood through with just our hand, we want to make sure that we have the width of our hand between this rib fence and the blade. If it's any smaller than that, then we'll have to use a push stick or some other device to move the wood. But anything that's bigger than this, we can use our hands to push the wood through the saw. Um, all the wood must be held flat on the table and you must never let go of it while you're doing this procedure. The saw blade turns directly towards us and because it does that, if we let go of the piece of wood at any point in time, the wood can pop up and go on top of the saw blade and then be propelled backwards towards us. So you never want to have anybody standing directly behind you and you want to try to avoid also standing in this place between this saw blade and the fence. So whenever possible, have your body outside of that line. There's two ways to do this. One is I could come over here and I could hold this wood down and also towards the fence as I'm pushing it through. So I have to put pressure downwards, put pressure towards the fence, and push that way at the same time. The other thing to do is to come on this side, which I think is a little bit easier in terms of just sort of leaning and giving it more force. You sort of lean yourself against the fence, and then you have one hand here and the other hand here pushing. So you have pressure down, pressure towards this fence, and then another hand moving that way. All right, so we've got our things all set. The other thing is I insist that everyone wears a full face shield for this table saw. Um, not only will that prevent dust and um, other wood particles from getting into your face, but if you ever have an incident of what is called kickback, which is what I described earlier where the wood gets on top of the blade and is sent propelling backwards, um, the kickback will help protect your face and your head, there's even a little bit of a helmet on here, from the wood that's going to be kicking back. Now, notice I've rolled up my sleeves. I don't want any sleeves or even a, a watch on or anything that might accidentally get hung up in the blade. So I'm going to turn this on by pulling this lever. <laughs> completely past where the blade and this little riving knife are, so it's totally cleared both of those things before you let go. Never let go of the wood while it's still touching the saw blade. Also, don't try to grab this piece. This is a loose piece that's never going to kick back at you or cause you any damage unless you try to grab it while the saw blade is moving. So we want to push that past the blade and not let go of it until the saw blade stops completely and also not try to remove this piece until the saw blade has stopped completely. Now, occasionally we'll have a piece of wood that's really, really long and we can actually have somebody at the other end who can catch it as it falls off the table. Uh, our table here is pretty big so we don't usually need to do that. We also have a little roller stand that you can use to support a long piece so that it's not tipping up and down when you're trying to feed it into the saw. Let's see, what else do we need to cover? Um, you never want to reach over or behind the saw blade, particularly while it's in motion. Sometimes the saw blade might stall. So if your blade ever stalls, keep your hand on it and then just bump that little off switch with your knee. In fact, if anything goes wrong, you can just bump the off switch with your knee, but never just let go of the wood because it can just go flying at you. So you want to make sure that you do not ever cut wood on this saw that doesn't have at least one straight edge already, that isn't warped or twisted in any way, and um, that you have your fence parallel to the saw blade. Alright, so now I'm going to show you what happens if we have a piece of wood that's very narrow. Right, we just cut this wood, so it's, it's still within the boundaries of not being very narrow. So we're going to use something smaller to do this demonstration. So 
here I have our little piece of two by four that we cut before. So the two by four is actually only three and a half inches. It's nominal size. But as you can see, if I was to put my hand here, I can't really hold on to that safely and keep my fingers away from the blade. So now is when we need to use push sticks. There are lots of different sizes and shapes of push sticks, but any one will work. The table clear of everything. For this one, we're going to need something that's kind of short. So we can use that one. And maybe something like this, or the other way around. If I was going to use this one, I'd be holding it like that. Push the wood through that way. Okay. All right, so let's bring our table over a little bit more. And right here is a little guide with inches, and it'll tell you the distance between the saw blade and this fence pretty accurately. So if it needs to be super accurate, you can measure the distance between this tooth and the fence. But most of the time, this little guide right here um, is good enough for what, what we're trying to do. All right, so take that, set it down. Make sure the saw comes up to speed. bump that switch. Alright, so you see that I used the push stick to push the wood between the blade and the fence and I don't stop pushing until it's gone past where the blade is. Then I can safely remove whatever was cut. So we get a nice, accurate, straight cut. And of course, the fresher the blade, the smoother the cut's going to be. All right, so one more thing that you might want to know about the tape, table uh, saw is that you can use it for cross cut. So we can use this miter gauge to make a cross cut to feed our wood in this direction. One thing you never want to do is use this rip fence and this miter gauge together. I've even seen people in, um, in magazines trying to do that kind of a thing because uh, the, the idea is that you'd be able to cut wood that was always the same length. There's a way to do that, but that's not the way to do it. So we want to take this rip fence and put it out of the way and everything actually out of the way. before we make our cut, cross cut. So for the cross cut, we're going to hold on to the miter gauge, and the miter gauge can be put at an angle also. If we want to cut something at an angle, we can feed it this way. So for this, we're going to hold on to the wood, hold it against the miter gauge, and down on the table at the same time. So we have pressure downwards towards the table, towards the gauge, and then we're going to push it forward. Just like that. Now, we have lots of other tools we can use for making a cross cut. A cross cut gets its name from the idea that it's going across the grain of the wood. But in fact, oftentimes we're using things like plywood where that really becomes irrelevant. So the grain on the plywood, the short way, is actually going the opposite direction of this. So that doesn't really mean anything, but you would use this for going the short way across the wood, and you would use the rib fence when you're going the long way down the edge of the wood. 
So that's really important because it's not safe to do it the other way around. If I try to do this, I don't have very much wood being braced against that fence. So it's likely to twist and fly off the saw. And obviously, if I try to do this, again, I don't have a lot of wood being braced here to keep that from twisting. So the better one would be to use the rough beds for that. Um, after you're finished with the saw, make sure you turn it off and take the blade back down. And that concludes our table saw demonstration.